hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Folks, there are a lot of urgent concerns facing Americans right now. Will the pandemic ever end? When will we get the coronavirus vaccine? Once the crown catches up to reality, will Meghan Markle play herself? I mean, she's an actress, but then do all the royals play themselves? I, for one, I'm not looking forward to Prince Andrew's take on Prince Andrew. The problem with so many big problems, there are smaller problems that are still big problems, but we might miss them because of even larger problems, which is a real problem. Which brings me to my new unfortunate segment. Uh-oh. Tonight, uh-oh. While you're worrying about the planet-wide COVID crisis, don't forget to worry about a possible drinking water crisis because it was recently announced that investors can now trade water futures. Uh-oh. I don't totally understand that sentence, but it sounds like a headline in a newsreel at the beginning of Mad Max before you smash cut to one-armed Charlie Theron driving a truck full of warrior concubines through the desert. Now, here's what happened. Recently, futures tied to the California Water Index began trading on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, meaning that for the first time ever, water will be a commodity like gold or oil. Uh-oh. That's not a good sign. Those are two things that we famously have a finite amount of. That's why they're valuable. There's a reason wedding rings are made of gold and not bottles of Poland Spring. Oh my God, you guys, he went to 7-Eleven. <laughs> now this sounds troubling because the big difference between water and commodities is that we need water to survive, which brings us to our new uh-oh sub-segment. Now that water is a commodity and can be traded on the futures market, it could invite speculation from financial players, including hedge funds. Yikes! Hedge fund speculation is never a good thing. Just ask anyone who had a subprime mortgage in the early 2000s. Their home is currently underwater, which they're going to want to start hoarding because it's a hot new commodity. Now, these water futures focus specifically on California, which brings us to our uh-oh, yikes, sub-sub-segment. Gulp. <laughs> Look how many bones I have. That is flat. Can I have those again? Can I see that again, Jim? Look at that. That's the Late Show promise. Unlimited bones. This impacts the whole nation because California has a huge agricultural sector and recently have moved to popular high-value permanent crops like almonds and pistachios, which require a lot of water for upkeep. And I hawked Pistachios, am I part of the problem? I'm sorry, I mean, not, not for promoting pistachios, they're a delicious source of protein, but for giving you the nightmare fuel that is my head as a nut. But the bigger issue is that California has just had several years in a row of historic wildfires and is emerging from an eight-year drought. Gulp. So Wall Street is now betting on a resource that California desperately needs to survive and currently has a shortage of. That's like a lifeguard going, bad news is your husband is drowning. Good news is in the next two minutes, the value of my life preserver franchise is going to skyrocket. Want to get in on the ground floor? Now, we don't know exactly what's going to happen with trading water on Wall Street, by which I mean we know exactly what's going to happen by trading water on Wall Street. According to a climate justice expert, as clean, usable water is becoming scarcer, the incentives in capitalism work to commodify it, and work to ensure that the scarcity is an opportunity to make money, adding, it's the way in which capitalism makes profits from human misery. Of course, commodity traders never go all in on human misery. They diversify into generational suffering, despair, ennui, and of course, Bitcoin. In other words, uh-oh. We'll be right back with Serena Williams. 